Good morning. Welcome back to the course on uh, advanced green manufacturing systems and we are discussing value engineering green plan in this module. We have discussed what is value, what is value engineering, various milestones of value engineering, where uh, had been value engineering applied and we also had a little light on uh, the green aspects those could be considered in value engineering. Now we discussed the value engineering methodology, the overview of that. Now, in this lecture, I will discuss fast diagram, function analysis and systems technique in detail and I will try to develop a fast diagram for a pen, a general pen that we use for writing. Okay. So, uh, what is fast diagram? So, fast or function analysis system technique aids in thinking about the problem objectively. I am just recalling a few things. The organization of functions into a function logic, the functions are organized into a logic. Now, I believe you are uh, very well able to develop the functions for a product to identify the functions is a better word. You are able to, we will be able to identify the functions of a product, functions of the components of the product and then you can see that whether there is a redundancy or not. For instance, join parts, fix parts, uh, provide fitment can be a similar kind of thing. So, we can see that if the functions are redundant, if there is a clear line between the two functions, separate kind of a job is being uh, accomplished by these functions, then we can definitely have different functions, but we need to work on that. So, we will uh, try to develop a fast diagram here. The fast diagram can be used to verify if and illustrate how a proposed solution achieves the need of a project, if and how. So, this is uh, the schematic of the fast diagram, fast diagram, in the fast diagram we have highest order function in the left and lowest order function in the right. It starts from left and propagates towards the right side. So, this is the building the fast diagram, this note I have given here. Okay. Then uh, all kinds of functions were mentioned, uh, so I just developed a broad flow for the chair. Let us again see the steps that are there to build a fast diagram. The very first step is determine the highest order function. Determine the highest order function, what is the purpose of this product? Why does this product even exist? So, why? what is the basic thing that people need when they purchase this product? Okay. So, for pen, we will try to see, pen is used for writing, pen can be is used for uh, not only writing, for drawing, okay, for uh, making notes, for uh, recording information. So, the, all these things we can consider, but we have to come up with one function that is the highest order function. All these words, just the verb and noun, two words abridgment that has to be very crispy and should be clearly able to mention or explain what is our function, basic function. That is the very first step. So, then we identify the basic functions. So, highest order function from the very highest order function, we can after we have this highest order function, we can move towards right and then start with that why do we need if from left to right would be how. How would we attain this function? How would we write notes? So, for that would be the steps identify basic functions. This is propagation of the fast focus, not of in the fast diagram actually, propagation in the fast from left to right. Okay. Then we expand the fast diagram, expanding is moving from left to right and then from center to top and center to bottom, if there are some support functions those are required. So, identify the supporting functions, this is 
this is uh, this step number 3 is from left to right left to right this is step number 4 is from the center to top and towards bottom okay this is from left to right direction then we need to verify the fast diagram for verifying the fast diagram we can have the numerical evaluation numerical evaluation will help us to see whether the highest order function is actually ranked one function or not or whether the lowest order function is the last rank or the lowest rank or not so that can be verified and we if if uh, there is a need we can reiterate or uh, rework on the fast diagram to identify or to develop the correct fast diagram so first of all i have this pen and i need to identify the basic function the basic function that i said can be uh, make notes okay that can be maybe make drawings or sketches make drawings okay so we uh, some data recording we record data we record the data anything what what we are doing trying to record something okay sometimes uh, what happens uh, even the kids are playing with the pens they are not doing anything they are just doing something they are not recording they are not making drawings or notes they are just making marks okay providing marks so you can say provide marks or make marks all these things any any of these functions we need to pick up so i believe that make notes make drawings record data record data could be the basic function because we are recording the data okay record data so i put the highest order function and i draw my left scope line just to recall these lines these black lines okay vertical lines are our scope of study okay this is scope this is scope so highest order function is on the left hand side of my left scope line now how do we record the data to record data we will have to make marks okay so i can put make marks how to record data while making marks okay now how do we make the marks the marks that we get on the paper while using this pen we get marks what is happening here now how are we making the marks i am just putting my pen on it and trying to write it so i am writing the letter a okay so this is making marks i am drawing a rectangle here okay i am just marking a line this i am making marks how is it happening the ink that is there in the refill of the pen okay the pen has various components that we will see the, the ink is being transferred or being deposited on the paper so i can put making marks would happen while transferring the ink we have we have to transfer ink or uh, deposit ink okay we can just try to okay, transfer in would also be okay so how is ink being transferred i am applying i am putting the pen or what do you see put pen on paper or put pen on the on the uh, object on which we are writing okay actually what i am doing i am uh, putting the pen and would it work if i just work like this without without applying any force i have to apply some force here some force some pressure okay how do we transfer it transferring we take the pen close and apply some force or some pressure then we move our pen 
okay. in this way we are transferring the ink. So, this happens transfer ink is happening while applying pressure. So, I will put apply pressure. Recording data, how are we recording data while making marks? How are we making the marks while transferring the ink? How are we transferring the ink while applying pressure? So, in this case, as uh, you can see, the two words are here verb and noun. Make is verb, marks is noun. Transfer is verb, ink is noun. Apply is verb, and pressure is noun here. And as we said, we need to have active verb, make is an active verb, and measurable noun. The marks size are to be measurable. So, that will be we will see when we will we need to be actually why it has to be measurable because we need to quantify it. We need to find the cost of doing specific function. What is the cost of making marks? What is the cost of applying pressure in the specific pen? The pens, for instance, the cost of the pen is rupees 20. What is the cost that is there to for applying pressure? For applying pressure, I need to have the size of the pen, it is around uh, the normal pen size from 8 mm to 12 mm. The size is around maybe 11 mm. Okay, this dia diameter is 11, 11 mm. They are such uh, we have to hold it. Okay, I have to put uh, have a refill and ink all those things in this. So this these functions will be divided into different components and different cost parts as well. How we will do? We'll see. So apply pressure. And why do we apply pressure? From right to left, if I go to transferring. Why do I transferring? To make marks. Why do I make marks? Finally, I need to record the data. Now, how do I apply pressure? I have pen in my hand. I have to bring the pen closer as I said. I have to apply some pressure. What is happening? The force in my hand is being transmitted or being transferred here. Okay. So, what we are doing? This force is being transmitted to the object on which you are writing and applying pressure we are getting we are transferring the ink in this way and uh, we are getting marks and this marks is recording data okay well, we can write number 1 2 3 4 so this i am recording data so how do we apply pressure we have to transfer force okay transfer force or transmit force or convert force. So, transfer force is done to apply pressure. So, this is that. So, transfer force. Now, what is the function in this pen? If I see this pen, it has various components to apply pressure. What is it has uh, this back body, the front body. Okay. So, we have a refill here. In the refill, we have nib. Okay, the refill is put here and the pen tip or nib actually this is pen tip only and we have ball in here. So, this is a nut and bolt mechanism that is that is helping us to screw this on and there are certain serrations if you say for the grip there are certain serrations we need to hold it there. Okay. There is a cap that is to cover the tip of the pen because if I do not have this cap or if I do not take this tip off it might if I try to put it in my pocket it might uh, make marks on my clothes or my shirt or it, it is not uh, recommended. So, so there is some mechanism we can have uh, the back click kind of pen ok this is the pen in which the tip is taken inside using a spring mechanism is a button at the back or we can have a cap or also we can have this roller type of mechanism nut and bolt mechanism okay to take the tip tip in and out okay i have got some pens here just to show the types of the products now how do we transfer force transfer force from the pen to the paper we have to use this outer body to transfer force because tra force is actually transferred from the refill to the the paper actually this refill is transferring force one can even write in this way as well okay so we need to support the refill
okay, support refill. How do we support the refill? We provide this outer body, we provide this outer body to support the refill. Okay. This body is uh, helping to support the refill. What else is body? this body helping us to do? That we will see. So, uh, to support refill, I can, uh, uh, it is not how actually to support refill, there are certain supporting functions here. Supporting functions is we need to provide refill, provide refill, okay. And uh, in the refill, we need to have the tip, the tip of the pen. We need to secure tip. Okay. What else is this doing? The body. I'm actually the, in this this portion. Okay. First, let me cover these. Make marks. First of all record data, make marks, transfer ink, this is done by applying pressure, this is done by transferring the force, this is done by supporting the refill. To support refill, we need to provide refill in the body okay. and we need to secure the tip in the body. Actually, in this portion, in this portion I am talking about the body of the pen. So, these two lines represent the body of pen. Okay. So, within body, what other functions is body doing? It is helping us to provide grip here. Okay. It is helping us to have the identification, the name of the company is here. Also, you can see the various colors, blue color, silver color, all those things are there. So, this is an aesthetics than appearance. As I said, the product uh, characteristics, one of the characteristics were the aesthetics or the appearance of the product that those are the cell functions. So, Along with supporting refill and providing refill and securing tip, which are the work functions. Work functions means these help the product to work. In this pen, actually, we can see the refill. If I take another pen, I cannot see the refill. In this pen, I cannot see the refill, but still it is helping us to make marks. 1, 2, 3, 4. We, I cannot see these functions, but these functions, the, these components actually refill, etc. But those are there and those are required to make the product work. So, these are work functions actually. And uh, what else it is doing? This pen, so it is providing identification. So, I will say it provide aesthetics. Okay, the color etc. and also it is uh, giving you information of the company or company identification, it is providing the identification. So, how do we support the refill? In this front portion, this front portion of the pen and back actually whole the body is helping to support the refill. This, these uh, orange lines, orange dotted, dotted lines, or we are talking about the, the body of the pen only. So, support refill, one of the functions that can come in direct line can be provide grip. Okay. So, we provide grip, finally what we get? We get a pen. So, if I stop here and write my lowest order function that is the product, the product that we get got is I will draw a scope line here and I have got my pen here. 
I have got a pen here. I'll write hold the pen. Okay. So this is my lowest order function. Hold the pen, and this is the second lowest order function because you know providing grip, whether or not to provide the grip, we do not have any grip in this pen. And the cost of this pen is around uh, uh, 20 rupees and this pen costs around 100 rupees. Why 100? Because it is a, also has a capacitive stylus here. If I do not consider this stylus, the cost of this pen should be around 50 rupees. The cost is higher. The thing that is making this pen to sell is the aesthetics, okay? the quality of the ink. The die of this pen is around uh, uh, 7 to 8 mm. This is around 12 mm. Okay? So, this is not having any grip. So, the grip is not the, you can say, the basic function or the necessary function. So, in this pen, in this specific pen, because they consider to have this grip, I am considering this as a basic function. Now, what are basic functions here? This center line here, let me first cover this in blocks. Now, these are the basic function from record data. Okay, to make marks, to transfer ink, I will just draw a straight line, to apply pressure, to transfer force, to support refill, to su provide grip and to finally get a pen. Now, let us see each function and let us try to identify, do we need to have some support functions for them? make marks. How do we make marks? Do we need to support just depositing or transferring ink can help us. And how do we transfer ink? We need to apply pressure. We need to apply pressure and uh, how do we apply pressure? We need to transfer the force. To transfer the force, I can put refill also has to support or uh, have ink in it. Okay? So, I can put this here as well. Provide refill. Uh, support ink. Ink is actually an important function. So, better I would say because ink is required. How do we provide refill? How do we provide refill? Why do we provide refill? Actually, it should go on this side, this side on the left side of the provide refill. Because why do we provide refill? We need to support ink. Okay? We need to support ink. Also securing tip, we can have uh, uh, certain mechanisms like uh, we can have the cap to secure the tip or to cover the tip. Okay? This cap is one mechanism. Another mechanism is provide nut and bolt as I said. Okay? Then uh, other uh, mechanism as I said we can have a button here. So, let me try to put these to secure tip that can be done in two three ways. Secure tip can be done in two three ways which is provide cap, provide nut, nut and bolt mechanism okay. and uh, provide button. Any of these mechanisms could be picked to secure the tip. So, let me have the connections again. Support ink, support ink, let me first cover this with a block, support ink is an important function and that should be there connected with my critical path. So, this is connected here, support refill is also connected with provide refill is connected with secure tip, to secure tip is an important function, we can have any of these options to secure the tip, provide nut or provide cap 
और प्रोवाइड बटन राइट सो दिस इज हाउ वी आर डूइंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन वी हैव वाई ऑल्सो वेन डू वी सपोर्टिंग वेन वी डू ट्रांसफर फोर्स वेन डू वी प्रोवाइड रिफिल वेन यू टू सपोर्ट रिफिल एंड वेन डू वी सिक्योर टीप वेन वी टू प्रोवाइड रिफिल इन दिस डायरेक्शन वी हैव वेन वेन डू वी नीड दिस थिंग ओके so this is the fast diagram of a pen broadly we have to try to we have tried to identify the functions of a pen and uh, we have put it in a format so what if we have multifunctional pens or uh, uh, we have multi color pens like this is a pen that is a multi color pen okay this is a multi color pen that can help us to change the color using the buttons at the back this is this is having four colors this is another pen that is having 10 colors this pen is having 10 colors this is actually for kid four colors might require sometimes if i making uh, some sketches i need to put it put the dimensions in a different color and i need to make notes put some special notes in different color like i am making this diagram uh here on the tablet and i'm putting different colors to make you understand the diagram in a better way color coding is there all the text is written in blue black lines represent the major boundaries and the purple lines represent the connection or the notes here so we can change the color to change the color what is the way to change the color we can either have a button at the back okay or either sometimes if you remember if you have uh, looked there certain there were certain pens which were having tips on both the sides they on this side we had blue tip on this side we had red tip what we did we just uh, swap the position and start writing in red color swap the position starting writing in blue color so those were the ways so if i try to make a fast diagram for a multi functional product so the multi functions can be anything like okay this is one of the pens that can even hold the tablet okay and uh, on the uh, head and on the tip of this pen here we have the capacitive capacitive tip or capacitive head i could say also we have this capacitive tip like i have a pen here in which i have this tip i can keep making notes okay if i require an infinite to surf or use my phone i can use just my do uh, this uh, head of this pen with capacitive head to surf on the phone okay to use it on the phone to open something so this is multifunctional pen there are certain ways we can have in this pen that is uh, uh, there uh, on the slide we have uh, the head capacitive head and tip both so we can have both or we can have on the one side like this is the pen that is having the tip on the front side only we i am trying to make notes i will rotate this and tip goes inside then this capacitive tip works okay i can work using this the certain uh, uh, you know limitations of this pen one thing is one has to uh, use its other hand to make it come out and make it go in number 1 number 2 there are certain chances that the tip might make scratches on your uh, on the screen of your phone okay there certain you know there certain uh, drawbacks or certain limitations with products those we need to see so uh, this is not only a capacitive tip pen it also has a laser light here it has a laser light here it also has a torch here so this is a multifunctional pen similarly we can have this kind of pen this pen can be tilted in this direction to support to provide a support uh, for the tablet or the mobile phone also it has a torch here 
it has the capacitive tip and the basic function it has a nib or tip ink tip also this will talk green products so green products how can we inculcate greenness in this product so this is the pencil with a sprout these are pencils with sprout what happens when you use this pencil this is a small pencil that is a, a but, but, but a big idea when you use this pencil you just use this pencil up till this point till this point you use this pencil and and at the this portion we have a sprout we have a sprout for sage tomato basil and if we use this pencil and after using we just try to sow it in the sand okay we sow it on in the ground this plant would grow tomato plant would grow basil plant would grow what is happening here if you remember we had three phases in the life cycle when we talk about the environmental aspects in the product before use during use after use and i had the impact environmental impact zero negative positive and i told you that i'll give you some examples in which we have positive impact as well now in this case in the phase this is uh, before use during use after use in the after use phase there is a positive impact it is contributing to the environment however while using the sharpening happens and the certain scrap is uh, produced that can be recycled that can come to zero or there is a positive if you just throw it away while manufacturing certain energy is uh, used so certain uh, certain energy pollution all this happens in manufacturing so there is a negative impact but after use we have a positive impact it will help us to grow grow plants so some you know uh, positive thing happens here so this is an idea actually there are three things about this sprout that characterize this sprout team those who developed this one first was that they believed in sustainability second was they want more people to care about the mother earth more and more people buy this pencil when they will actually sow the seed they'll have this kind of feel okay this is required this might become some might uh, like uh, bring some awareness this might bring some awareness okay yes of sustainability is there they can do some other activities also in this direction so this is one uh, second part and uh, the third part was it is simple fun and simple practice simple exercise that they plan to do this so by planting a sprout pencil instead of throwing it out one can make a sustainability visible to others and also inspire others to make a small change in their routine life this is the idea behind the sprout pencil now it is available in more than 60 countries so the full range of this sprout non toxic non toxic sustainable pencils are there even this uh, wood that is that is from which it is made is non toxic wood so this is one idea okay another idea is this is a pencil that is made out of newspaper as the pencil made of newspaper what happens the chinese actually made the pencil of newspaper at first and uh, that have been in the market for a long time and in india also the paper pencils were manufactured by someone who took this idea and what is happening the raw material is newspaper these pap these pencils generally have an attract attractive plastic covering at this point of time to make it a little attractive but the raw material the core material here is newspaper so this plastic covering is just that entices children to buy these pencils so uh, this is actually developed by zebra stationery products so they decided to make this pencil using only old newspapers for more than 2 years they kept on experimenting with various newspaper and different glues and ultimately in 2015 in india they came up with these pencils and now they are sec uh, working on they are able to sell this the quality of the paper and uh, everything was controlled and glues this is also a non toxic pencil 
So, this is how we can make the product green. I have this pen here. This is a pen. This is not the complete green pen. We have the ink here, everything, the metal tip here that has to be there. And uh, but the body, major part of the body, the major portion of the body is made out of, out of a cardboard, okay, out of a paper. So, this is this is compostable material, but the head and the tip, okay, the front and the back end as is made of a plastic, okay, to provide this button mechanism. It is however there are pens available which are completely made of out of made out of a uh, material that is biodegradable. So they, in those ways we can inculcate the greenness in the product. So now here I am talking about the multifunctional products. So I'll write here multi functional pen. Previously, I just had a fast diagram for a pen. The product is pen. Okay. Now, I have a multifunctional pen. I am just telling you how to uh, uh, bring more functions in a single product. Now, this is a pen that is uh, having multi functions. It is having a laser in it. It is having a torch in it. Okay, there are certain buttons, this is a button for laser, button for torch and uh, uh, also there is a magnet here, this magnet can be used to pick if the pins are there, okay, this magnet can be used. Also, we have the stylus, not stylus, sorry, this is a pointer here when we are teaching, but this is actually the teacher's uh, gadget. So, there is a tip that can be used to write something, okay, we can write something we can make marks. So, I would not discuss about these many functions in a pen, but let me just discuss a multifunction pen that is having a stylus in it and uh, it can have different colors let me say. So, in multifunction pen it is having a stylus, capacitive stylus and it is, it can have different inks, different colors. Okay. So, for different colors as I said we need to have the button at the back, it have the button at the back, let us consider it has a stylus here as well, okay, the capacitive stylus. It has a, it is having a button at the back. So, this button mechanism, why do we need to have a button? Because we need to switch colors as well. Let me try to move from right to left now. So, from right to left we can move, we need to have a button because we need to switch mode. When do we switch mode? When we are going to write, when we need to change color. So, I will put here change color. Okay. When do we change color? Because we need to have different kinds of inks. So, this, this can be connected here with apply pressure only. This can be connected here with apply pressure. Okay. Change color. Also, we need to secure a stylus here. How do we secure a stylus? We need to switch mode, switch mode from a pen to a stylus. For that, in this case, we, we just do need to just swap the pen and start writing. Okay? So, we need to switch mode. We need to switch mode or we can have it uh, using the nut and bowl mechanism. In this case, nut and bowl mechanism is helping to switch the mode from pen to stylus. Okay? This tip is coming out and in. So, provide nut, this change color is connected with provide button. Okay. All these things come in between. So, this provide button can also help to change color and provide nut can help us to switch mode. switch mode from the writing pen to the stylus. Why do we switch mode? Because we need to use stylus or we need to secure stylus. We can put anything like that. Why do we need to secure stylus? We need to collect information. We need to assess. Okay. I will put assess information. So, this is connected here with provide nut.
ok. This is connected here. Change color is a separate function. So, we have three functions here number one in this specific pen, number one record data, number two assess information, assess information can be the highest order function as well, this can even go here, even go here, actually not for the basic pen just for a stylus not a highest order but the second highest order it, can, it is actually parallel to make marks, not supporting but it is something that is parallel to make marks ok and uh, use stylus is how we access the information on the mobile or on the tablet. So, these all functions, so these are three functions 1, 2, 3, one is pen that is writing, number 2 pen with colors, number 3 is stylus. So, this is ok not to forget this is the scope of the study. where we can use value engineering. So, we have seen the first diagram for a multifunctional pen where the functions are the basic function is writing and the second function is providing colors and the third function is stylus. So, multipurpose I would say, what okay, a multipurpose. Okay, because the word function is something that we are defining each of them is a function actually. So, let me try to develop or add a few functions in respect of greenness. Now, this pen if I am talking about this pen, this pen is having green body ok. So, green body, so I will try to start again from the left in this first diagram only and I will try to see how can we develop a function when the body is green. So, let me try to put here, so I would like to have a green pen or green the pen, green the pen means greening of the pen as you know the first word is verb, second verb is a noun. So, this green is a verb greening of the pen ok like or having a better ecological status of the pen. So, this is green pen, how do we get the green pen by having this kind of body that is uh, that is biodegradable ok, that is I would say compostable that is that can be thrown away. So, I can say greening of the pen can be done by uh, having compostable body. So, I would say compostable compost body compostable body. So, as I said the pencils were there other things that we can have in green pen is I will write it as a parallel function to this we can add seed or sprout. How do we get the compostable body? We provide the body of a biodegradable material or I can say we provide something like a use recycled material, compostable, compostable is not a noun I would say um, biodegradable body, biodegrade or green body providing green body, how do we provide green body? We used recycled material. How do we use recycled material? In this case, in, in the place of body here, we will put here uh, we use, I can put directly material here, use newspaper. Okay, newspaper or anything that is recycled or reusing, this is reusing actually, this, this portion is reusing the newspaper and this one is recycling ok, green at sprout 
green pen. So, let me try to connect this with a green line, green pen is used by this, also a sprout can be added, use recycled, use newspaper, again this can lead to, uh, this function can be connected to, in this pen we have provided button, okay, secure tip provided button, all those things are there, finally we can hold the pen. So, this is the green pen, so I have brought it a little lower, so as to show it as a separate entity. Now, this is my scope of the study again. Now, this is my scope of the study. Okay, this is scope of value engineering study. So, this is how we establish a fast diagram and we try to have a diagrammatic representation on uh, the relations between the functions. Now, the question comes, is my fast diagram correct or is there any other way to develop this fast diagram or can I have some other Navier function? As I mentioned earlier, there is no correct fast diagram. In that, I have a note, is there a correct fast diagram? There is no correct fast diagram, but there is a valid method of representing the logic in a diagram. No correct fast diagram, but a valid method of representing the logic in a log the logic. So, this is the method, Let method is we start from the, the steps that we mentioned, we first identify the basic function or the purpose of the pen, the highest order function, we start from the left and we start propagating towards the right, wherever we feel we can add the support functions. Some functions which might not be the path here like power identification that has come on the body and uh, some other functions that might be unnecessary or uh, maybe tertiary function if I say primary, secondary and tertiary function, tertiary functions might be there that can be uh, re reduced or that can be eliminated or that can be uh, changed or br brought uh, or uh, maybe uh, um, uh, mixed with some previous function with the secondary functions. So, these things can be done. So, a validity of fast model for a given situation is dependent on the knowledge and scope of the workshop participants. So, what is the knowledge of the participants? Number one knowledge, number two is scope okay, and the scope of the work. Now, the fast diagram aids the team in reaching a consensus on their understanding of the project. So, this is actually uh, the way to have a feel that what the functions are and what we can do with functions. The way to deal with, uh, to develop a fast diagram, one of the ways can be, we can write the names on the slips, separate slips can be made, okay, like this size slips can be made, one slip, slip number one, slip number two. So, the, the names can be written here and the slips can be arranged in an order to see whether the flow comes correct or not. And then slips can also be compared that whether there is a redundancy or whether the functions are repeated or not, those things also can be seen. So, whether the functions are same or not, whether redundant or not, those can also be identified in numerical comparison. If in numerical comparison, the score that we finally get, the total score is same for two or three functions. And the functions are trying kind of doing a same uh, kind of purpose, they are solving kind of the same sub purpose, then the functions might be taken together and they might be you know compiled into a one function, two, three functions, those things can also happen. So, this is all we do in value engineering. This is my fast diagram for a green pen. We are developing green pen, we can also have erasable ink, green body and uh, at sprout in the body, use recycled, we can also have an have erasable ink. Erase ink. So, there is a pen that is developed by friction company. So, this pen has a ink that is sensitive to thermal, that is sensitive to heat and at the back with friction when heat is produced, this ink is erased. Okay, this is also a green initiative. I will talk about this one, we will talk about the creativity techniques. Okay. So, erasing can also be one of the functions that can be added. So, 
this is my second section of my first diagram. So, next I have value engineering timing, when to apply value engineering. So, when we talk about a project or when we talk about manufacturing a product, the very first thing is we identify the need, identify need. Based upon need, we have some preliminary information, some preliminary design. preliminary documents I would say. Preliminary documents uh, for identifying need uh, for instance uh, people are demanding something to hold a mobile phone. So, for instance this is a mobile phone people like to hold this mobile phone this is a ring that is produced here. This is a cover ok this is a bumper cover which helps the mobile to uh, be safe from falling or from breaking like it, it can fall, but it would not break. So, there are less chances. So, this is something that helps I put my finger here. So, single hand operation can be done ok. Sometimes when the phone is hold like this, you know, my thumb cannot reach each corner of the phone. However, there are functions in the phone that the screen can be made smaller, but uh, it cannot reach when I have my finger here fixed here. So, it can reach each corner here ok. So, this is something need identify need the preliminary documents is what can be the way can we have a uh, some rubber strip here or can we have a ring here this ring can also has a, act as a stand for my mobile ok. So, preliminary documents are there then after preliminary documents we have uh, design ok design after design we can have uh, some specifications work specifications or blueprints I can say ok. So, this is the next step after blueprints I can think of having a or develop I would say I can have think of having a, a prototype for this develop then validate after development is there I just develop the prototype and uh, or prototype or if we can develop a few pilot pieces pilot pieces are the piece uh, the products which are manufactured in the very beginning and those are uh, used uh, 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 for uh, having the feedback from the customer from the internal customer those is those are sometimes known as minimum viable product ok. So, those are developed for that as to validate it better whether any changes are required finally, we go into production. Now, knowing all these things that these steps are here, when should one apply value engineering or what happens if we apply value engineering at later stages or the earlier stages. So, what happens this is the time also going on here timing is going on also we having progressive steps. Now, value engineering if we apply value engineering at this point when we identify the need I would see the this is the line I am drawing this is actually resistance line. resistance line means resistance from the manufacturers or from the people who are working in if I apply value engineering at the later point during production and it then I see ok this change can be there these functions are there then people have very high resistance this high resistance would be there ok at this point when design is happening the resistance would be lesser, but when we even identify need we can just identify the function what do people need people need something to hold the mobile phone. So, can we have something different can we have a glove for them in which uh, the there is a rubber band they can fit the mobile phone over there or can we have something a mobile phone itself that has a an attachment to fix the fingers and fingers in there. So, identifying need is one thing. So, the earlier we start the lesser will be resistance ok then opposite to it 
we can have an acceptance line people are highly acceptable to the new ideas or the new functions from creativity for from value engineering those come here the ideas to fulfill the functions so this is our acceptance line this is the acceptance line now between these two i can have the cost savings so these are the cost savings so cost savings so this is the saving from value engineering from value engineering so this is the loss if we start here the resistance is higher so i can put here it here this is actually loss this is the gain so this portion i'll make it red this is the loss and this one is gain okay so it is recommended to apply value engineering as early as possible if you are thinking of a new product that has to be come to the market so this is uh, about the fast diagram and value engineering timing let me have a task for you earlier i had given you this task you were asked to identify the functions as a verb and a noun then what is the cost to attain the, this these function this function specific functions you were asked to do this then develop the alternative ways the broad ways you were to develop now i will try to request you to please the functions that you have identified functions identified so i even request if you haven't performed this task just identify the function then move to next step functions are identified now try to write the functions on slips i'll request you to write the functions on slips okay then try to arrange those slips in a diagrammatic way on paper slips okay then arrange in a diagram that is the fast diagram now just jot down number 1 highest order function number 2 the critical path critical path functions okay number 3 support functions number 4 for then unnecessary functions if you find something and try to see what you could do for greening okay green functions of the product that you have chosen okay so try to perform this task this exercise will definitely help you to have an insight in developing the fast diagram and understanding the value engineering process we'll come up with the creativity techniques then i'll ask you to 
come up with the creative ideas to perform the functions that you have selected in a alternative way. Okay. So, let us meet in the next lecture where we will discuss the case study on value engineering in which uh, the case study the product the for the case study selected is foot operated air pump. So, the drawings were made and uh, the functions were identified the costs uh, for the components were there actually those were obtained from the manufacturer. Then we developed the cost for the functions and uh, also we rank the functions then we try to identify what is value improvement potential for the specific functions. So, those things were done. So, I will come up with a case study in the next lecture. So, please uh, try to study fast diagram you can refer these notes also some of the links will be provided to you for further studies. So, let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you.